To carry the harvested wheat from the field, the Victorian farmers need a cart, or dray. But theirs has lain unused for decades, and Peter is unsure of the condition of its wheels. So he's visiting Mike Wright, the wheelwright, for advice. How are you? Hello, Peter. We've got a wheat harvest that we want to bring in, yeah. and for that we're going to use our dray. Yeah. But I've had a look at it and the wheels are a bit wobbly. I was wondering if you could come as a wheelwright and cast your expert eye over it. Yeah. The thing is, I, I know so little about wheelwriting, I'd, I'd love a quick sort of demonstration, actually. All right, yes. Well, obviously, we start with the hub and work outwards uh, to the spokes and the fellies, which are the wooden rim around the side. Right. The hub is made of elm because elm's got a very twisted grain and it, it doesn't split easily when the spokes are driven into it. Right, OK. The, the, the spokes are, are made of oak for strength. Yeah, so the, all the power of the wheel, the weight, is just transferred down the grain. Yeah. The rim of the wheel, or fellows as they're called. Fellows, yeah. right. They're made of ash. So there's three different woods. You've got elm, oak and ash. Ash, uh, ash is quite flexible, isn't it? That's the reason that it's used. It takes the shocks of the road better than anything else. Uh, once we've got that on, we've got to make sure all these tongues are engaged. Right. And then tap them up gradually all the way around close all the joints well this looks pretty complete as a wheel but you, you don't use glue or nails so how do you hold it all together well we hold it together with the metal tire that goes around the outside right uh, this is made smaller than the wheel okay and uh, it's normally heated to red hot so that it expands sufficiently to go over the wheel and then cooled quickly so that it shrinks and pulls all the joints up tight and holds the whole wheel under tension. And so this would be red hot as it was going absolutely, on? Absolutely, yeah. And then yeah. it would start to cool. Yeah, and draw these joints up tight. And there we have a wheel. Yeah, and you can see it's quite... And that, that tyre really ties it all together, doesn't it? That's right, it's a very effective way of clamping up the whole wheel. I have to say, on our dray, there's, there's a bit of a gap, actually. It's not as tight as this, so it might be the tyre that's a problem. That's it. That's it. Actually, we need to lift it a bit more, really, but that'll do it. This one, the tyre is a little bit loose, so I think we need to take that one off and uh, retire it. Yeah, the last thing we want is our dray to fall apart. As the year on the... This is our dray tyre, just taking it round to the forge. The metal tyre's been removed, repaired, and is ready to go back onto the wooden wheel. Hi, Mike. Hi, Peter. Well, I've got the tyre. All right, so it'll drop over like that. Right. You can see it's too small to go over at the moment. Yeah. But when it's hot, hopefully it'll be big enough to drop over. So when it gets hot, it'll expand. It'll expand. Bigger in the wheel. Yeah. And then it contracts and clamps. Yeah. A hundred years ago, we would have been using the uh, Shrewsbury Chronicle, not the Shropshire Star. <laughs> Plenty of sticks around the outside, wigwam fashion. Right. Fill up all the gaps so that the wind can't get into it. We're now going to light our fire. I'm feeling a bit nervous about this, actually. Uh, There's uh, nothing to it. Yes. <laughs> Take your word for it. <laughs> Let the air get to it a bit more, yet. Yeah? I have to say, I'm starting to feel my eyes beginning to melt. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> it's getting hot. It's time to move back a little bit, I think. Yeah. I, I, seriously, the, the heat of this fire, I cannot exaggerate how intense this heat is. In an effort to retain my facial hair, and I have had it burnt off before, I'm just putting a bit of water on my face and my hands. So that just gives me a little bit of extra protection against the fire when I go in with the tongs. So I'll keep my eyelashes, I'll keep my eyebrows, and I'll keep my beard. And unlike Mike, I'll keep my hair. You ready, Peter? <laughs> I'm ready. We've got right. to go for it now. Grab one Pardon of these. Of the essence. Just raking the fire off the top of the tyre. One on. One on. Hang on. 
Oh, ready? Ready? Ready. Joint on the middle. Yeah. Okay. Right, push all's out. Lock it down with a hammer this side. Hang on, wait, wait. Do you want to... Water. Just evenly applying water here. This is just shrinking the tyre into place. As you can see, by like the water boiling, as soon as it hits the tyre, it's still red hot. There's actually so much of a gap around the outside, I didn't think actually it was ever going to close up, but it is starting to close up now. It is. Looks after the water touches it. It's still bone dry. That was very, very intense. Are you happy with that, Mike? Yeah, it seems fine. Um, it's still quite warm to the touch. Yeah, it is. The water did work on my face, although now it's been replaced with a sheen of sweat. <laughs> Right, one wheel, one cart jack. This is the wheel we've retired, and Mike's very kindly helping me put it back on the dray. That'll do. Wonderful. And we just slip the wheel on. And now the linchpin. Wheel on. Wheel on. Yep. Hopefully this means that uh, we'll have a working dray for our wheat harvest. Right, that's up. Trestle out. Trestle out. Wheel down. Right there. Job done. With both the dray and reaper binder up and running, Peter and Alex head back to the cottage to plan the harvest with Ruth. Over a curry. <laughs> <laughs>